Okay, my friends, today I'm just going to review Sub-Zero Evaporator Fan Motors. Just occurred to me that maybe someone out there doesn't know the basics. So I don't think I've ever seen uh, a Sub-Zero Evaporator Fan Motor that wasn't clockwise rotation. Maybe there are, I don't remember, but most of them are clockwise. So the way you tell if a motor is clockwise or counterclockwise is you point the shaft to your nose, like I'm doing right now. And if the shaft there is on the left on the top and the shaft, or the bar I should say, down on the bottom on the right, like this configuration, the motor's going to turn this way. All depends on the apparatus in here, the way it's designed, but this is a clockwise motor facing the shaft. Some people don't know that you could take these pieces off, these bearings, and reverse this and get a counterclockwise motor. So you see the two quarter inch bolts there? They screw into this and all you do is you pull them out, you turn them around, and you have a counterclockwise motor and the shaft or the bar on the top is on the right and the bottom is on the left and so this rotation is this way okay just so you want to know or maybe if you don't know now you need to know now I just came back from the service call and the freezer was running in about a 12 to 15 inch vacuum and I had just recently the other day did a sealed system job there I recovered the refrigerant and I weighed it into the exact amount. So the customer called me back and said the freezer is only at 9 degrees and it's flashing vacuum condenser. So I went there today and <laughs> wouldn't you know it, the evaporator fan motor was bad. And how do I know that? Well, you can check. Now here is the red wire goes into this coil and here is the white and we should have continuity on doesn't matter which way these are I'm just trying to untangle them all right so we have our our gauge here our meter and we're going to put this right in there so it touches the copper wire for the red line and the, and now I'm touching the white and there's no continuity it means there's an open circuit in here somewhere this is a really rare incident that I, I find so let's take this apart and see if we can find out where that break is okay so before I take this motor apart I just wanted to point out this is another sub-zero motor. It is basically the same motor, same mounting, same voltage and all that. Um, 0.28 amps. Anyway, we can use this motor by taking off this bracket. Now this, this came out of a, the 424 and both the upper and lower evaporators are the same. Evaporator motors are the same. Even the evaporators are the same on a 424. So I'm just going to take this bracket off. You know, usually I get a, a machine here in the shop and uh, after I diagnose it, the customer doesn't want to fix it because it's too much money or they want to get a new one, so they tell me trash the old one. And before I do, I strip it down for parts. Not because I use the parts and sell them, but I use them in my shop when I'm rebuilding something. So, um, anyway, you can look at these two. The shafts are almost identical in length. This, this motor can be used, this came out of a 642 side-by-side -side freezer. Freezer, I mean, the freezer compartment. This motor looks pretty similar. And you can still reverse it. So, just word to the wise. And this one has the same harness on it. So, 
we'll put that aside for now and uh, our next thing we'll do is take that apart and see if we can see the break but wait let's do something before before we uh, close out this section of the video let's see what what we get here we should be measure, measure the ohms 56.6 .6. that's what I'm getting and this one we're not getting anything all right so just so a little tidbit of information that you may be able to use in the future all right let's proceed okay my friends so here I took this black cover off this fan motor here you can see the coil is fried now uh, these people had a power failure and so when the power came back on there was a surge I guess and the motor was on at the time and it burned out the coil so you can see definitely no good so that's why we didn't have any continuity so now you know uh, one more thing before we leave this episode of evaporator fan motors I want to show you this fan motor here I had I designed this fan motor for this company back during I think um, before the pandemic COVID and uh, I designed it for the sub-zeros 420 0170 and 0160 so they make these and they sell them through uh, I was buying them through all brand appliance here it is I don't get any commission on these things or anything I just designed it and told them uh, how I wanted it and it comes with a blade that's the motor not quite as um, rugged as the sub-zero motor but it's made in the USA and it's made by Acme Miami so this um, what they did was they added these little uh, for connectors on here so we can screw on into the sub-zero brackets this goes like this and so that's the same and you also have shaft that's adjustable so you got two break-off points here and if you have to break these sh um, shafts off be really careful make sure you secure it really tightly before you break it off and don't put any pressure on the motor because you could bend the shaft and ruin the motor uh, and then maybe try to sand this down when you break it off just file it or something because because uh, sometimes when it's really sharp and you put the blade on there it cuts the plastic out of here and it can loosen the blade all right and this is also reversible and it's set up for clockwise rotation you reverse it counterclockwise all right so that's pretty much all I need to say about it right now for um, sub-zero evaporator fan motors if you need to um, get one of these you can get them from all brand appliance online I know they have the stores in Pennsylvania and I think maybe Jersey uh, Acme Miami also makes these flexible defrost heaters I've never used them but just uh, FYI all right people folks guys gals thanks for watching see you on the next one